Hey y'all and welcome back to the party. It's your girl Britt Reacts and today we are reacting to top 10 Bill Burr moments on Cohen. Let's see what he has to say. Uh, so so does your wife watch any of these games with you? Does she? No, she has the female complex <laughs> multitasking brain. That's why they can't be happy. They they just, they just always, they're like, what is that Anytime lizard that this. can look at two things at once? That's what they're I like. So, so they got the shoes they want, and then they see some other woman walking in. <laughs> so going, oh, look at this skinny <laughs> over here. She thinks she's cute, right? And they, that's what I've learned. Oh, God. You know what makes women happy? Nothing. <laughs> Nothing makes them happy. And that is why they have slowly taken over the NFL, because it annoys them. That, that we can just sit there with like a pizza and a drink, like, eh, that's not holding, and just, just be like, <laughs> and enjoy ourselves. So you're saying that you, because you're be happy, that you think uh, your wife and women in general they, want to take They're jealous of it. They're jealous how simple the male brain is, that you can just sit there and be entertained and find true happiness, and it just bugs them, <laughs> so they gotta ruin it. Well, and they're slowly taking over the NFL. You know, all next month, once again, they're gonna dress everybody in the NFL like newborn baby girls, for whatever reason. <laughs> What do you, they, they, did you forget that there's breast cancer from yeah, like a know, year ago? Yeah, so they did it last year, and they're gonna do it again this year. Did yes. you forget from like they're a year ago? They're slowly gonna take it over, and they're, they're gonna, they're going to move us out. Because I'm telling you, I don't understand why they keep trying to go into a male football league. It's like, why don't you guys band together and start your own league? Get your own thing going. But I realize they don't want their own thing. They don't, they don't want their I've actually never seen it, it this past him saying, um, like the first time he said football is where I've seen it stopped in other clips. Um, I didn't know where he was going with the football thing, but he's basically saying, like, wasn't the breast cancer thing enough last year? Like, we didn't forget in a year about breast cancer. Now we got to dress in pink again. <laughs> it's, like, it's actually not just football. Like, a, a, a lot of sports actually do that for, the, for breast cancer a month. That's hilarious. But listen, guys, guys, we know the crazy is there. We know it's there. Um, we try to fight it. <laughs> Let me stop speaking for all women. I'll speak for myself. I'm an, I'm, I'm, I'm every woman. <laughs> no, but seriously, it's like, you know, on the inside, you're like, why am I bugging him? He looks so peaceful and happy. And then on the other side of the inside, you're like, uh-uh, he can't be sitting down doing nothing. There's 30 things I need him to be doing. <laughs> it's, a, it's an internal warfare that we are aware of but like, we don't wish to con control it or stop it. And again, we just being me. I'm not speaking for anyone else but myself, but I feel like it's just better when I say we. I don't know, it's the crazy. It's the crazy. Their own <laughs> they, they want our <laughs> I don't know what it is. We don't want it. I think it's because we're happy. We're just sitting there enjoying ourselves, having a good time without them. It drives them nuts. And they just gotta go in there and ruin it. So they don't like, they got women's basketball. They don't even like it. They don't even like it. <laughs> Foot, most they of them don't even, they don't even like football. Like, I don't get it. I don't get like the fascination. Like if my wife is having like three of her friends over, I sc I leave. I don't need to be there and ruin it for her. I know, <laughs> I know you guys, I'm going to change the dynamic because I'm there and you can't talk about 100% female stuff. Out of courtesy, I'm going to get out of there. I'm, I'm, I'm going to leave. But they can't do that, you're saying. One guy, one chauvinistic <laughs> jackass up there understands what I'm saying. <laughs> He's like Edison. Oh, I don't know. He invented more. all this stuff to everybody. What are you but, talking but about? Did he? <laughs> did he? Did like did he sit down and like I'm gonna invent the iPhone and just sat there soldering? I love how this morphed, but I wish it would have morphed as we see him like lose his hair. Like we went from like older bald build to now younger fiery redhead build that I think looks like Rumpelstiltskin from Shrek. I've said this in another video. <laughs> Google it. I promise you he looks just like him in the best way. But I wish whoever put this together would have done it so we could like slowly watch him become shiny head bald uh, Bill. Did, like, did he sit down and like, I'm going to invent the iPhone and just sat there soldering, possibly welding, right? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't he have like a crew of guys helping him out? Sure, maybe he did. So why, when he went to those nerd fests, didn't he have like a like a like a chorus of scientists behind him who helped him out too? Are we talking about Steve Jobs? He walked out like he was Tesla, <laughs> like tapping into electricity. I'm not with you. I think he just kind of like told people what to invent. Like he just kind of came in, like I want my whole music collection in that phone. Get on it! <laughs> <laughs> and all these nameless. Faces 
faceless guys. Yeah. Made it happen. Yeah. And then they have yeah. the big nerd concert, and he goes out there by himself. No belt, you know, sneakers on. I just didn't buy it. Because <laughs> it's a great way to tap out See, from the news. See, now we're like in and just, between. And I'll watch a game here. and get away from it. Now there's like all these causes are getting like attached to it. Like I was watching the World Series, and I'm in the middle of watching the World Series, and out of nowhere they have this moment, stand up to cancer. I'm watching a ball game, and all of a sudden everybody stands up holding up a sign of somebody that they either know that's dying of cancer or oh, died of it sad. in the middle of the game. It's just that's like, what are you so doing? Sad. I'm trying to watch a game here. You know, no, there's a time and a place. Look, I know somebody. I know somebody that has died of cancer. I would never go to the movies with you and in the middle of it hit pause and be like, oh, by the way, Conan, I know this guy. <laughs> This is a really good point. Actually, last night, you guys, last night, my youngest of three younger brothers, um, he is in his senior year of college, and he um, he had a basketball game close to my house. Um, he doesn't go to college in the same state that I live, but he happened to be just about 45 minutes from where I live, so we drove to go watch him. And they had them, um, they had one male athlete from each team I don't know if they did it for the girls team because we didn't make it we came at the end of the girls game but um they had one athlete from each of the teams get on the microphone and read off of a piece of paper the conduct code or something like it was the it was the most awkward thing and it changed the energy in the in the whole arena so everybody was like whispering like what is this I've never seen this before and you know, I'm around basketball a lot. Like, my husband coaches D1 basketball. My mother-in-law coaches um, high school women's basketball. And this was the first time I've been to a D2 game in a long time. So I was like, is this the conference that said this, this is happening? At? Like, what is going on? But, like, it really shifted the energy and kind of, like, took a minute for everybody, like, get it back. Because everyone was just like, what is this? And it was so awkward. Like, the boys clearly didn't want to do it. Like, they just got randomly selected. And it was like... Don't say anything or or da 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 da, and everybody was just like, "Huh? Like we're at a basketball game." <laughs> so I say all that to say, I get where Bill is coming from. Like certain things, there there's just like a read the room kind of energy. It's like, "Huh? Like why would you? You know, maybe at the end or the beginning." Um, <clears throat> well, maybe not at the beginning because it ruined the game, but maybe at the end, that's when you like pay homage or, you know, I don't know, but I'm just saying all of this to say that I agree with Bill here. That's awesome. In the middle of it, hit pause and be like, oh, by the way, Conan, I know this guy. <laughs> he died of cancer. It was horrific. I could have lifted him up off the sheet with two fingers. It was horrible. Hey, enjoy. Oh, by the way, I got molested. I was nine. Enjoy oh, the rest of the night. Uh, Oh, he didn't do even more in between. <laughs> you know what he did for me? He raised $500 million for cancer research. That's what that lie did. Yeah, yeah that was great. Yeah. And everybody had the bands on. Remember the band? Yeah. Sure. Right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, that blocked out the sun, yeah. right? <laughs> you know, it wasn't a no, block no, out no, the sun. Cancer? Yeah. I love that. <laughs> well, the whole thing was annoying, and I hated how Oprah was interviewing him and acting like she was dumbfounded that this guy would do this. Like, she's been in show business for 35 years and she can't, like, wrap her head around <laughs> some guy doing whatever it takes to get to the next level. This Didn't this she, Armstrong? for the first five years, have, like, men who wanted to bang their mailman's boyfriend? And she, and she didn't want to no, do she it. Didn't. She didn't want to do it, no, but she didn't. she didn't have the power to say no, so she wrote it out. And then when she could make a good decision, she did a show, but she stood on the heads of those little people for five years until she got... And then she, Is that true? She's sitting there across from this guy like, like so how could no. you... You know exactly what he's doing. It's the stupidest thing I've ever seen. Look, the guy was a sociopath on a bicycle. Yeah. All right? As far as... Like, uh, as far as I'm concerned, we, we got off easy. Yeah. If that guy was working for a corporation, he probably would have been pouring stuff in the water supply, doing God knows what. Just, <laughs> just keep him on the bike. Just let him go up and down the hill. He's not hurting anybody. Not hurting anybody. He isn't. And just the himself. top 20 guys, like, all tested positive yeah. for roids. So our roided up guy really? beat your roided up guy. <laughs> oh, wow. I didn't know that. 
I definitely remember when that happened. It was such a huge controversy, but I didn't know everyone. Is that true? I just always, when Bill talks, I'm like, is that true? I need to fact check. I need to sit here and be fact checking as, as he's talking. <laughs> Who run that filthy sport? Who was sitting there going like, "Oh, this is absolutely, this is ridiculous." He, he doesn't represent cycling. Are they going to return all the money that they made off of that guy? Huh? They're going to turn in their not. yachts? They're not going to. <laughs> they're not going to do it. Everyone, turn in your yacht. Are you worried about him at all being Ooh, in office? Do you think? I mean, dark, is it, does it concern you? I don't know. I feel like the president. You only see him like once every three weeks. You know. <laughs> It'd be like if you were dating a chick and if she was a jerk, but you only saw her once every three weeks. There's like no way she could break your heart, you know? What? No, it's you gotta, like, you gotta, like, see. immigration site to move to Canada crashed. Do you think people are gonna really move to Canada? Do you think I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. You yeah, there's to too to many people here. The rent's too high and all that. Just thin it out. Give us a little negotiating thing. And then what's gonna be funny up there? It's not gonna be Michael Moore's Canada. What he said, oh, you keep your doors unlocked and everybody's drinking syrup and it's, yeah. Drinking syrup? He didn't, talk, say, talk. He didn't say everyone's <laughs> drinking syrup. I'm quite talk to anybody of color that tried to make it playing hockey up there. Listen to the stories they have. You'd be like, were you in Alabama? No, it was in Manitoba. <gasps> that is so crazy. I was just about to say, my husband played college in Manitoba, in Winnipeg. Manitoba, is that the same place? Manitoba? He played at Manitoba in Winnipeg. Is that right? Anyway, my husband spent five years playing basketball in Canada. And he just was like, it was the most, like, he he loved Canada, like, the place. But the weather and stuff, he's like, I almost, I don't know how I made it. I don't know how I made it through the weather. If it weren't for the weather, I think we would live in Canada right now. <laughs> that is so crazy. Be up there, listen to the stories they have. You'd be like, were you in Alabama? No, it was in Manitoba. <laughs> Yeah, those are still white people up there. Yeah. Just because they're on the other side of the invisible line doesn't mean that they're not going to act like white people. Yeah. So you're not a big fan of Canada is what you're saying. No, I love Canada, but I don't go up there with like this starry look in my eye like everyone's going to be riding around on mooses. Right? <laughs> it's just like... It's environmental these... stuff. You really are worried about it. Uh, I am and I'm not. I just also feel like, you know, it'd probably be a good thing if most of us died. <laughs> You know what I mean? Okay. It would be. Like, face, there's no problem. Eating. There's no. <laughs> uh -huh. there's, there's nothing wrong with driving a gas guzzling car. There's just too many people doing it. Yeah. So you got to figure out a way to like thin out the herd, and it's too late. <laughs> it's, no, these are the hard decisions that are going to have to be made. We are. We're here to hear about some yeah. hard choices. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you know how I would do it? What? I would. I would randomly sink cruise ships. <laughs> Why would you randomly sink cruise ships? Because you, you get laughing? like 2,500 to 3,000 people a whack, right? And I don't think, I think it's a good mix of people to get rid of. To be honest with you. I, they yeah, they're, not, they're not interested. What happens after the second time they catch on? No, because this you is know? what you do. As you're sinking them, you're building an exact replica. So as you're eliminating people, you're like creating jobs. And you just, like a lazy Susan. I feel like the latest thing that's driving me nuts is I spent 20 years. <laughs> He's really funny in these sit-down interviews. Like, I might beg to differ funnier than he is on stand up when he's doing stand up this I, I don't know if he like pre rehearses this or you know he has like the topics and he kind of re writes out a little bit but that he's funny in these sit down interviews this is hilarious content and you just <laughs> like a lazy Susan <laughs> like my latest thing that's driving me nuts is I spent 20 years in the back of the plane getting treated like an animal and uh, I finally worked my way up to the front of the plane group one which means you get to board like it's your plane Right. right. You, board, you get to board. Yes. For, yeah. You first, sit yeah. in a chair that's the size for a human being. <laughs> There's a place for your bag. Yep. Yep. Right. You get a little hot towel and all that. And then the second I get that, all of a sudden now, there's like these 20 groups that are like pre-boarding now. Yeah. Like half the plane qualifies. Before And they're getting on. Class. And I just sit there just like losing my shit. You know? It well, starts off like it's just like anybody in uniform, anybody in the military. So it's like, all right, all right. But after like the 20th guy, you just start being like, have, have you seen action? <laughs> Are you on the front line today? <laughs> <laughs> <Right? laughs> then it's anybody, anybody with kids, 
anybody with disabilities, and then just anybody with a red shirt. Hey, it's, it's Tony Tuesday. Anybody got an answer? You can get on. Dude, I sat one time. No, I, this is so true. It really feels like, what's the point of like, getting all these things like if paying let's not even say getting paying or you know you have to hit a certain mileage on delta before you can become like medallion but yet and still there are people who get to be on the plane before you just order a wheelchair at the front of the airport and that will guarantee you to be the first second or third person on the plane after the pilot Day. Anybody named Anthony can get on. Dude, I sat one time. I saw this guy get on the plane. Uh -huh. Okay, he wasn't in uniform. He didn't have kids. He had all his limbs. He wasn't he limping. He had all his limbs. He didn't have a cough. He just walked on the plane. It's like, who the f is that guy? <laughs> How did I get on before that guy? <laughs> so. <laughs> no, I always hated the anxiety of being in the back of the plane. I just remember, like, the worst is whenever you would get your seat and you'd sit there and they're about ready to close the door and you'd have that empty seat uh -huh. next to you. Like, yes, like yes. the uh -huh. poor man's first class. You're like, uh -huh. oh, shit, I'll bring the armrest up. I can actually be great. And then all of a sudden, some fat bastard gets on the plane. <laughs> and you're like, no, no, no. <laughs> you're, you're literally, you're like Quint at the end of Jaws, like sliding on the <laughs> I swear to God, this is all true. <laughs> this dude got on. He was this so fat. True. He was sitting next to me. I was literally next to him and behind him. He was. <laughs> He, like, tried to make himself smaller, and he, like, folded his arm, and his lat came out like, like a, you know those old Western no. saloon things? I'm just sitting behind this thing. So, and, and, so yeah, so, yeah, that, that so, motivates yeah. you to try to get so to a certain place years, in life. all these years, 20 years, you work your way up to the front, and now still, they won't let you, uh... Yeah, now that fat guy's considered disabled, because he can't stop eating cookies. <laughs> So he gets on. Look at many groaning. 90% of the world is starving to death. F that guy. <laughs> Eat salad and get on the treadmill like the rest of us. <laughs> Were you I flipping out the day like when you met? Did you flip out? Did you, you really that yeah, early? Yeah, I remember. Courtship? She told me to go see that movie Monster. Mm -hmm. Remember that movie with Charlize Theron? Yeah. Remember Charlize? Yeah. yeah. Why is he trolling people? Charlize? Her name is not. What is her name? Is it Charlize? I think it's Charlize, but the way he just said it, Charlize. <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you for allowing Bill Burr to be born in Boston and have this aggressive Boston accent because it just makes everything that comes out of his mouth hilarious. Highly hilarious. Truly. Monster. Mm -hmm. Remember that movie with Charlize Theron? Yeah. Remember that? Yeah. Yeah. And everybody was saying how, uh, oh my God, it was unbelievable. Like they, they literally blamed guys that she was a serial killer. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like when you saw the Jeffrey Dahmer movie, it wasn't like, ah, somebody shoved a tuna fish sandwich up my ass and I confused people with food. So I, like, they didn't make like a big excuse for him. You know? She was a psycho killing people and she should have died. But I'm like watching it feeling guilt. Do they ever take responsibility for their actions? Even when they're murdering people, it's somehow our fault. It's, it's, it's <laughs> unreal. <laughs> He's what? dead serious. He's so serious. He is so serious. Why would having a tuna fish sandwich shoved up your butt make you want to eat people? Because another man did it. <laughs> right? So it's another person. So you, you equated, I don't know, sex with food? I forget. I forget how the idea went. I forget. But all you I know should... is she laughed when I said it. She was dying laughing and kind of saw my point. And um, I right, always so... hate when she says to me, she'd just be like, you know, I just don't see what, where is that coming from? Where is that coming from? It's just like, honey, how many I actually can't imagine what his wife deals with. Like, the fact that he's so random on these shows, what does he say at home? Like, she's probably half the time cracking up and half the time just like, where do you come up with this stuff? Because, like, watching him, I'm always like, what? <laughs> like, he's hilarious, but sometimes you're like, like, the tuna fish thing really was just like, Bill, what? Babe, babe, whoa. Where are we going with this? Like, what? Just be like, you know, I just don't see what, where is that coming from? Where is that coming from? It's just like, honey, how many childhood stories do I have to tell you before you follow the breadcrumbs to the psycho that you married? I mean, <laughs> did you ever take a psychology class? Like, you didn't see this coming? Right. That's what it is. It's not that she says that I'm a jerk. It's just 
the nerve to be surprised. <laughs> It's just like about the annoying nerve. people. Like when people tweet, the it's nerve. very easy to piss off one side. The art dark is to try, you got to try to get everybody. <laughs> so you tweet stuff like Trump is such a dope. He's actually going to make me vote for a woman. Right. <laughs> and then you just sit back. <laughs> then you just sit back. Intentionally. And you just watch him. You're like, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted. <laughs> you got You're mad that children Twitter are, are not being uh, this, hit. This should be the threat of it. Half of it, it was just the look. It was just your dad was acting like he was going to do it. He never did it, but your mother did. And because, <laughs> because she was, no, because she was a woman, it was like, okay. Because yeah. it was like, hey, you, know, you let a girl beat you up. You know, you kind of felt emasculated. Yeah. <laughs> we had a rule, that, like, I actually, a lot of the stuff that I look at from when I was a kid that actually kind of made sense in a way is now would now be considered like abuse, I guess. Like when I was a kid, if you didn't finish your supper, as we called it. Supper, yeah. Yeah, my mother was just like, well, you're gonna finish, you're gonna, um, she would just wrap it in cellophane and you just picked up where you left off for breakfast. Like, like a blue collar job. Like, you take the shovel would out of the hole and just start today? digging Probably. it again. Someone would so, definitely call defects on Yeah, I remember one night we had cube steaks, <laughs> which is like one of the toughest pieces of meat. I don't know if you guys, everything's so like Asian infused Wagyu beef. Everybody's eating that crap right. now, but. Cube steak was like, they had literally had to hit it with a hammer to make it like edible. And uh, so we were having cube steaks. And I forget, my little brother was still in a high chair and he couldn't finish his. So my mother goes, all right, we're well, just gonna have to eat it for breakfast. And that was like eight hours away, which was like half his life. So he's like, all right, I'll, I'll take that deal. So the next morning. <laughs> Half his life. Oh my gosh. I'll take that deal. <laughs> so the next morning, we, I remember we were having waffles. My mother always made Sunday breakfast. So we had all these waffles, eggs, bacon, this whole layout. My brother was looking at half eaten cube steaks and a little mound of green bean casserole. And he goes, so he looked at my mom. He goes, Mom, can I have a waffle? And she goes, No, you got to finish your supper. He's like, Well, after I finish my waffle, uh, supper, then can I have a waffle? She goes, no, that is your breakfast. And he goes, oh, mom, I hate you. And my dad, without looking up, took a full glass of milk and threw it in his face. <laughs> he was in a high chair. This is what kills me. What kills you me. You want everyone today to have as miserable a No, but it was kind of funny. I just, we know what's hilarious was my mother just popped up and just immediately started cleaning up and my dad just kept eating. Like he didn't like, <laughs> no, like the rolls were. That would definitely be abuse today. Oh my gosh. This kid, if he's still in a high chair, but he can talk, he's like a toddler. You just threw milk at a baby toddler. <laughs> because he wasn't eating hard cube steak, he probably couldn't finish it because he couldn't chew it and or digest it. He's probably like super constipated now. Up, and my dad just kept eating. Like he didn't like, <laughs> no, like the rolls were defined back then. Now the guy has to throw the milk. He has to clean it up while telling his wife she's brave for just sitting there. Like whatever that is. Can you hear it? Oh, oh, I know. <laughs> Women are so overrated, right? We, we went from- Wait, 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 we wait, went, wait, wait, what? We wait. went, wait, we went, what? we went from not listening to them to now it's just, it's just, it, you know, it's just, it's, it's ridiculous. Like that believe women, it's like all of them. <laughs> how about, how about 85%, I'll give you 87%, all right? But that last 13% that keys your car, lights your shit on fire, <laughs> and puts a family pet in a, in a pot of stew. <laughs> what? Who put a pet in a pot of stew? Glenn Close. Oh, Glenn that, Close. Yo, yeah. yeah. <laughs> the way he just answered it is so mad if Glenn Close did. <laughs> like, um, I said this in another Bill Burr video. Anytime he talks about his dad, I think about the dad from This Is Us. Um, Jack's dad, he was so awful. And I just like, that is the picture of Bill Burr's dad in my head. Blame Bill, not me. That was funny. I never, I've never watched the Conan show. Um, I'm not a big TV girl or late night TV girl. Um, so I'm not even sure if the show is on anymore, but to see him progress on this show, the two of them have great TV chemistry together. Conan is like, what are you talking about? Um, that was funny. I really enjoyed that. Um, all right, y'all go have the day you deserve. Peace.